going to do, uh, it took as powerful and strong as God, it took years for God to get me to the play. We're not just going to give a little lesson then send you home. Jesus said, if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Now, we talk a lot. Of, here's what we're going to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak here for a little bit, and then we're going to we'll, we'll have an altar call. We'll have the altar workers come forth. I'm going to take about a five-minute break, and then we'll take people that want things broken off your life. We're going to take it back in this section. So if you need deliverance, if there's things, if there, for the, we're going to pray for the sick and the press, that things will be broken within your life. And the Bible said, well, I've got four scriptures over here on the, on the lavender flyer, that every time a demon is cast out, it's a miracle of God. It's a supernatural power of God. Okay, so this, uh, I want to make this clear so that people understand what and why. Is that there's the, the Bible says, go in and possess the land. And what I learned is that there's a land without, but there's a land within. What we're going to do today, we're going to go right into the land within you. In your mind, in your will, in your emotions, in your body, in your sexual realm, any curse upon your uh, poverty, your finances, going to go in there and undo that heavy burdens. Jesus said, for this purpose, I, uh, I came to, the, to destroy the works of the evil one. So any works of the evil one that's operating against you, God wants to set you free. Uh, a way with just talking about being free and walking out bound. They're, they're going to the freedom of God. It's going to be brought right where the chains are. The chains are going to be broken, and you're going to be released. You go out changed today. Now, uh, uh, last Sunday was was basically the whole message was to show you uh, the Spirit of God dealt with me strong, very strong, on Saturday morning before last week's message to to teach you what I did upon that to show you that there are curses and that uh, nine of the ten commandments are repeated in the New, New Testament. Uh, because you're, go you're going to hear people say that uh, there's no consequence of sin. You go, you come to the altar at age six uh, or eight, and you pray the sinner's prayer. You go sin, do all that you want, drink, drug, fornicate, lie, cheat, steal, and you're still going to heaven. I'm saying that's a life from hell, and uh, people are going to try to come to convince you that a Christian cannot have a demon. There could be no curses. And I'm not trying to tell you to believe like I believe. I'm telling you, examine the scriptures for yourself. I, I'm not trying to manipulate. You don't have to believe like I believe. I'm going to bring the scriptures. I know what God has told me to teach this church, and I am accountable before God what I teach this church. And I will stand before God. Now, uh, I'm careful that what I'm doing, I'm going to the beginning of the Bible, and I'm working towards, okay? I don't know how far I'll get today. Well, I'm going to continue to show you there are consequences of sin in the New Testament. Not just in the Old Testament. There are consequences of the sin in the New Testament. And that was what our Lord of Message was last week. Where the people say, well, that's the Old Testament. God said, oh, Uncle Scrooge is a mean old guy in the Old Testament. He's a Santa Claus in the New Testament. And neither one of those are true. <coughs> God said in Malachi chapter 3, I'm the Lord and I do not change. It said in Hebrews chapter 13, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Okay, that's what we need to understand. Okay, so I'm just going to give one little thing here, and then we're going to go right where we left off. Um, and this last identity word I'm speaking today, my title is Identifying and Breaking Curses, Part 3. Okay, in Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 15, See, I have said before thee this day life and good, death and evil, in that I command you this day, let the Lord thy God with the to walk in his way, to keep his commandments, his statutes, the judgment, that you may live. What's God's thought? That you may live, that you may multiply, that the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land that you go. But if your hand, but if your heart turn away, that's Satan's goal, to get your heart to turn away. If your heart turn away, so that you will not hear, but shall be drawn away, if you worship, if you worship other gods and serve them, I denounce you to this day that you shall surely perish. The word perish doesn't mean you make a mistake and you, and you die. It means you lose. If, uh, destruction will come. You will not escape. In other words, there are consequences of the sin. So Satan is always going to try to get you. Uh, now, as, as time goes on, I will not get to it today. I won't even get anywhere near to it. But the Spirit of the Lord, we've, we've taught a lot of deliverance in the church, and new people come in, and the Spirit of the Lord has, ta has led me to teach on curses that you understand. And in time, I'll go to all the different kind of curses as time goes on. But one of the main things that you need to understand, there's something called personal sin curse. And one of, that's one of the main things I want you to understand, that Satan wants us, he, Satan 
in the Garden of Eden needed cooperation of Adam and Eve's will. He needed for them to make a choice. And when they made, when they violated the scriptures, then were there any consequence to Adam and Eve's sin? Okay, did, did Adam and Eve's sin affect other people? Okay, now that's the whole, that's the question, okay? Now what I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying that, that God tells you exactly who he is. God never, never, uh, we do not need to weaken, we don't need to weaken who God is. And say that there's a Santa Claus God, you can do whatever you want, you're still going to go to heaven. It's a life from heaven. God will tell you who he is and how to approach him, okay? And, the, and there's, so the enemy of your soul wants to pull you away from that. So it's important that we, we say, verse 19, I call heaven and earth to record against you this day that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your seed may live and may multiply. Now, so God, here's what God said. I set before you death to life, blessing and cursing. Now, look right here just a minute. If, if you came to a crossroads and you, you got to either go death or life, and you see God's got these big arrows, flashing lights going this way, and the devil got something sinful this way, and we choose death, then what I'm saying is that God is a just God. We made that choice. And in, when we make wrong choices, God's not the problem. The devil's not the problem. Who's the real problem? Okay, so, see, we make, the devil wants us to make wrong. So when God said, I said before you, death and life, choose life, God's telling you what to do, right? And he tell you what will happen so that you and your seed, Satan gets to our children through mommy and daddy. And many times mommy and daddy make mistakes with their children because grandparents made mistakes with this parent. And it keeps going on from generation to generation until someone has enough of God to stop it. So that's the point I want to make right there is that God sets before us death and life, blessing and cursing, choose, so then the choice is ours, okay? Now Satan... Satan is a liar, he's the father of all lies, so, he, so he's going to lie to people and try to make sin and the world look better than the things of God. So they get people to make choices that will bring destruction. Now, see if you could, see if you could, uh, I, I want you to think, I'm not, you know, I'm, I, I'm just going to ask a stupid question, but I just want you to think, because there, there's going to be, here, here's what, we got to learn this in such a way we know this for ourselves. Secondly, we've got to be able to communicate this to other people where they will understand. Because people are going to tell you there are no consequences of sin. But God said the wages of sin is, but the free gift of God is, and life everlasting, okay? So there's the choice, death or life, okay? That's in the New Testament, that's in the book of Romans. Now, let's go to uh, Proverbs chapter 6. That's where we ended up uh, last Sunday, Proverbs chapter 6, and we... Uh, and, and some of these that I'm going to touch today, there, there might be uh, one to five hours so just on some of these topics. And all I want to do is just I want to, I'm giving you a scan, so to speak, an outline of a whole bunch of things. I want, just want you to understand that when you see people, you're going to see things operating in people's life and you're going to have answers for them. You'll see things within your own life. Okay, we ended up in Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 2. It said, Thou art snared with the words of thy mouth. And thou art taken with the words of your mouth. Have you ever, now, one of the things, uh, and I won't elaborate on this because we spoke on this before. But see, when we, listen, when we learn to listen to that internal voice that's going on inside of us, you ever heard, uh, so sometimes we can say something like, I'll never love again, I'll never trust again, I'll never open up my heart again. So we can put a word curse upon us and uh, that we speak that death to ourselves. And that we can't understand why we, why we have trouble submitting to authority. We have trouble with the opposite sex. We have trouble with the same sex. Or we have trouble opening up our hearts. We have trouble lusting. I'm, I'm, we have no trouble lust, loving. <laughs> See, that's the forbidden fruit. Okay, So he's always going, let me, let me inject that. See, there's... There's two spiritual fathers, either the devil or God. Okay, and uh, Jesus said, your father is the devil who was a liar. Okay, so when people lie, who's their spiritual father? See, my whole life before I became a Christian was a lie. My whole life was a lie. Then when you get saved, God becomes your father. And when you understand that he, 
he begin, he teaches you as the heavenly father. Now, in the same uh, same chapter there, we're going to pick up. Uh, that's where we ended up uh, last Sunday. We're going to go to uh, verse 10. I'm sorry, verse 6. Proverbs 6, 6. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. The sluggard means idle, slack, indolent, treacherous, lazy. Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. The ant has no guide, no overseer, no ruler, but provides meat in the summer and gathers her food in the harvest. Now, I don't want an ant to outwork me. An ant will work and gather more food than a human being. <laughs> and a human being go dig up an ant and say, give me, give me some of your food. Verse 9, how long will you sleep, O slugger? That means idle, slack, uh, indolent, treacherous, lazy. How long will you sleep, O slugger? When will you arise out of your sleep? Now, the one I'm talking about now is poverty. I want to show you how poverty comes. Verse 10 says, yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall poverty come upon as one that travails and and want as an armed man. In other words, I want you to stop and think of yourself being some part of the city, and you, know, you walk around the corner, and there's someone with a gun. And the whole, that's, what, that's what this means, is that want will come upon you like someone armed with a gun. That's what that means right there. Now, um, back in my heathen days, I'm, I'm ashamed to say this, but this is the truth. In, in my heathen days, because we got into the drug scene, we got into the counterculture, we got into the scheming, we, we, were, we were anti-establishment, we were anti-authority, we were, we were just about anti-everything except ourselves. And, and, and this is why when I became a Christian, it was so easy for me to get saved and stay saved because everybody was scheming on one another. I, I'm ashamed to say this, this was the goal. The goal, you find someone, the opposite sex, and uh, you start a relationship with them, and, and they go to work, and you stay home. Because work to us was a four-letter word. Okay? Okay, so if the person put pressure upon us, go get a job. Well, we go get a job, but we had long hair. My hair was about as long as hers. And my, so I would say, well, I, I got fired because they, they don't like hippies there. They don't like long-haired people. But the truth was, I come late, leave early, or I didn't go at all, or I was stealing from the company. Come on, saints of God. Now, what I'm telling you, if you're if you're single and you want to get married, you wanna you wanna find out the the work history of someone because there's people that work as a four letter word. The last thing they want to do is work, and they see a lot of people. See what we looked at was we looked for people to scheme on. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to take that a little bit deeper, because when we were in the world, and, and you saw somebody you didn't see for a while, you go like, uh, uh, how's, what's going on with you? Uh, well, I got this job. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Things are really going bad. In other words, the, the point that we're trying to say is, you must be, you're not scheming very well, because you have to go to, to work. That's just, that's, that's why it was so easy to come on. And there's ladies here that know that. There's ladies here that know exactly what I'm talking about, Okay. There, there, there are dudes that want you to go to work, but there are people that, that want you to go work and they'll stay home. And while you're working, they're puffing on evil weed, having sex with someone else, and playing the role of the victim. I'm saying that, that poverty, some people hug their poverty. They don't want to be set free from poverty, from nothing in the world. It's their lover. Because to break poverty, they got to get a job. I, I, didn't, I didn't curse anybody out right there. Said, you got to work. Come on. Uh, come on I'm, I'm telling you, that's exactly. I'm not bragging about just saying that's where we were. That's where the, that's where the baby boomers were, the, the hippie generation. You want to know where we were? That's, that's the bottom. That's, that's what we were. Everybody schemed to one another. And... and uh, uh, go, uh, yeah, I'm serious. This was so common. Find someone with a good job, shack up with them, play the role of the victim. Well, they don't. I can't get a job. They don't like my long hair. No, they didn't like my attitude. They didn't like you know. So poverty shall come upon thee as one that travails and one as a armed man. 
Okay, now, in the, right there, now see, in the problem, God, is, is that God's inability to provide, is that the devil stealing their money, or, or the person the problem. Okay, now over and over again, you're going to see people, that the reason there's poverty, because they're the problem. Yeah. See, what, what I'm saying is that, if you add one plus one, you come up with two. If I get the job, then I'll have money. Oh, but I, 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 I'd rather stay home and watch Jerry Springer. Come on, said there's people that do that. There's there's people that do that. Okay, now let's go on. I want to enlarge upon this because I want you to see there's a certain thing here, uh, and when you when you learn this, okay, Proverbs twenty one, Proverbs twenty one and verse seventeen says that he that loves pleasure shall be a poor man. See, people drink, drug, party, fornicate. Lie, cheat, steal. The, they would rather watch soap operas than Jerry Springer than get a job. I, I'm sorry, I'm not communicating very well. I'm not. <laughs> Come on, saints of God. Come on, this is real. You got to under, This is what God said. He that loves pleasure, he that loves pleasure shall be a poor man. He that loves wine and oil shall not be rich. Okay, there's people that see what their their love is laziness. Sluggard, slothfulness. The last thing they want to do is get a job. Proverbs 23 yeah. and verse 20. Do not be among wine bibbers or a riotous, riotous eaters of flesh, for the drunkard and the glutton shall come to. The drunkard and the glutton shall come to what? Now, who's the problem there? Does God have an inability to deliver? Is the devil attacking them and overcoming them? Or are they just making wrong choices? And. Yeah. And they're, wa they're wasting their money. Okay, so he said, The drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty, and drowsiness shall close the man with rags. Um, now, have, have you, ever, you ever, there's a, <laughs> I'm trying to, in, in the realm of, of, of taxes, okay, the government taxes, and there's certain things, there's a certain area that call it sin taxes. Cigarette, they tax alcohol. Come on, they they tax cigarettes. Come on, there, there are all these different things. They, they tax. And see, if, if you looked at someone, if you added up, uh, how much does a pack of cigarettes cost? Anybody? Everybody going to act like they don't know. <laughs> Over how much? Six six dollars. Okay, take somebody somebody get a, a six dollars two packs a day thirty days out of the week and tell me how much that is. Six dollars a pack, two packs a day, and tell me what that adds up a month. Eight eighty four, eighty four a week, a week. Two packs a day. Yeah, so that'd be that'd be fourteen fourteen packs. Three hundred six for a month. Okay, now see here's what here's what you here's what you want to see. That person will spend three hundred and thirty six dollars a month on cigarettes, and then be mad at God because they don't have a car. Now, who's the problem? Is God the problem? Is the devil overtaking them, or are they making unwise choices? Now, then you add alcohol on top of that. Come on, then you add cocaine, you add crystal meth, you add evil weed up on that, and you're talking about $800 a month going down the drain. See, and so that's why poverty comes. So when it says, he that loved pleasure shall end up in poverty. And that's why many people are in poverty, because they come out of poverty They've got to stop the sin thing, and then they've got to get a job and provide for themselves. Okay, so what, what we do as a church then, we want, to, we want to help people, but I want to know someone's work schedule. Because I've had people come to me, and they haven't worked for five years, and they, every month they want the church to pay their bill. Well, why, is, why aren't you working? Well, if I, if I go get a job, then, then they want me to pay child support. Yeah, they won't work, and they want the church to pay their bills. 
So this is back in the days when I worked full-time. I worked full-time and was doing the church full-time. I had two full-time jobs, and I told this guy, do you, do you want me to go get a third full-time job while you sit at home and do nothing? Because you were, you were willing to make a baby, but you don't want to raise a baby? Come on, say, I'm not working 24 hours a day, seven days a week while he sits home and does nothing. See, he that loves pleasure, come on, will end up in poverty. So that, that's why they call it in the government. They, they, you see it on the news. Sin taxes. Sin taxes are going up. They're recommending uh, taxes on cigarettes go higher. Okay, now let's go to the next one. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 17. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 5. Thus said the Lord, Cursed is the man that trusteth in man and make flesh his arm and, and whose heart is departed from the Lord. Now, many times the, the human being or the man that we put our trust in is ourselves. Anybody beside me ever thought they might know a little bit more than God? Yeah. Cursed is the man who puts his trust in man. Now, can consequences come upon someone that trusting in man or human being more than God? Yeah. Now, let me just say that the single parents many times are very vulnerable because they think, I, I, need to, I, need to find, I need to find someone to marry, so someone to have an income. And they marry the first thing comes along, and then they they find out they end up marrying someone that doesn't want to doesn't want to work. So now they got another child to raise, although the person's an adult. Okay, so the see if we try to trust well, uh, I need to marry someone so I'll have an income. It's a it's trusting in trusting in people. Okay, I'm telling you if you if you love God, you want to go on with God. You're better. You're better single than married to someone uh, that uh, you know that curse you out every that, that that you know that wants you to go to church. It's a bunch of nonsense. Cursed is the man put the trust in man and makes flesh his arm and whose heart is departed from God, for he shall be like a heath of the desert. Okay, if we put trust in man and people rather than God, God says here's how it be would be like a heath in the desert and shall not see when good coming but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land and not inhabited. That the land would be so bad no one even lived there. But blessed is the man put his trust in God. Yeah. Isn't that what you're going to do? Okay, yeah. so you see the contract that cursed is the man put his trust in man, but blessed is the man that puts his trust in God, whose hope the Lord is. And he who puts his trust in God shall be like a tree planted by the waters. And he that spreads out by her roots by the river and shall not see when the heat come, and her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful of the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Why? Because it's, it's by the river, okay? Okay, so that's what God said. So there's cursing. If we put our trust in man, it brings barrenness, it brings drought, it brings dry, it brings famine. But if we put our, our trust in God, you'd be fruitful, okay? So even even when there's a lack of rain, you, you will be, you'll still be provided for. Okay, uh, Ezekiel chapter 8. We're going to keep turning to the right here for the most part. Ezekiel chapter 8 and verse 9. And he said to me, Go in and behold the wicked abominations that they do here. So I went in and I saw, and behold every form of creeping things, an abominable beast and all the idols of the house of Israel, Portrayed upon the wall round about. Now what they did, they put evil art and drawings upon the upon the wall. Now there are certain drawings that uh, Satanists will put upon the wall. There's like a watcher spirit. And a watcher spirit would be uh, put upon the wall and there would be a demon assigned there. And that demon reports to other demons what's going on. Whoever comes and leaves your house uh, or whatever, okay? So the, what he's talking about here, now I want, I want you to think about graffiti. That you see uh, demonic graffiti in different places. So that's what the idols of the house portrayed upon the wall. So they would write these things upon the walls. Okay, so we're talking about, and if you understand how they make the, the watcher spirit and, and how there's a sign of anarchy uh, within there. Okay, there's, there's eyes there, then there's a sign of anarchy, or witchcraft. Okay, so imagery means drawings and pictures upon the wall. It means demonic art. There can be upon that curses and curses of death okay anarchy graffiti and watcher spirits okay so the, this is upon the wall so he, he said i want you go i want you to see this so that you you understand so that there's demonic satanic art um 
I was uh, speaking at a uh, young men's class one time in, in another state, and there was a man, young man sitting in the very back row. And while I was speaking, he was looking down, he was drawing. And as, as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit within me was, was grieved. And I went, as I began to look back, I began to walk down the aisle. There was an aisle right down the middle. I began to walk back. And the closer I got, I saw demonic wow. waves coming up. And what he was doing, and I went back and I looked, and he was making a demonic drawing, and there's a demon upon the art that he was making right in the Bible class. Wow. Right in the Bible class. Very careful. You want to be very sensitive you know, in the house of God, you want to real, be real sensitive with every thought, every word, every action. You don't want no kind of distraction, uh, disruption. It, it, it's, a, it's really, it, here he was right in the house of God and, and drawing demons. And there was a demon on that picture. And there, I could feel the oppression coming up from that. Okay, let's turn to, um, let's go to Matthew 18. Now, this, is, this one here is real familiar. Now, these are different things. We're going to pray for you in a little bit that can be broken with the knife. So keep, keep, uh, keep track of these if you want prayer on some of these because I'm gonna, we're going to pray. Our whole purpose of the church service is that you would, you would leave here. You would have a life-changing experience with a life-changing God that if there's something upon you, that don't feel bad about that. We're going to confess it. We're going to repent. And we're going to break it. It's going to be cast out. And you're going to be set free, and, you're, and God's going to be well pleased with you. Everybody got something. Everybody got some kind of weaknesses, okay? Okay, in uh, Matthew chapter 18, and I'm just going to do the short part of this. This is the man that was forgiven a, a great big debt, but he wouldn't forgive someone a small debt. And in verse 33, should not that also have compassion upon your fellow servant as I had mercy upon you? And his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors. Now, so this guy, this guy would receive forgiveness, but he would not give forgiveness. Okay, so if, if we do not forgive, then we are not, we're not forgiven, okay? That's what, that's what the Bible said. We, uh, remember the, when the, what they call the Lord's Prayer, forgive us as we, forgive us as we forgive others. What we're really praying is, if I don't forgive someone, don't forgive me. That's really what we're praying, okay? Forgive. Forgive us as we forgive, forgive other people. So that that'll that'll really motivate you <laughs> to forgive. Okay? And and in my opinion, the way that makes it easy to forgive is walk real close to God. Well God's real to you, the manifest the presence of the God. When you when you learn to enjoy the presence of God, the God will manifest himself to you. God you have God's favor. You're so close to God that God will withdraw his presence to get your attention. And as soon as he withdraws the presence, that's enough consequence. That's enough consequence right there. That you, you admit, what, what did I do? What did I, where, did I, where did I miss it? Oh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I think about it. Yeah, I was picturing my hand being around the throat of that little parakeet. Now I know where I missed it. <laughs> I was really entertaining that. Okay, so his Lord was wrote and delivered him to the tormentors. Now, here's what the tormentors mean. In, in uh, the Greek, it means torturers. It means to be vexed. It means to be in pain. Uh, now, this is, this is a, a main cause of arthritis, okay? Unforgiveness, there, there are certain, certain sicknesses that are tied to with certain sins. And there are certain things, high blood pressure, uh, arthritis, especially, what's that crippling? Uh, what is that? Rheumatoid. That's it, rheumatoid arthritis. That's, that's especially tied with, that's roots of bitterness. Um, and hatred, and revenge, and retaliation. Okay, now, look right here just a minute. Let me, just, uh, what we want to do, we want to go, these areas, we want to go in. We're going into that land, and we're taking back ground from the enemy, okay? If there's been uncontrolled thoughts, we're going to go in there, okay? See, here's what the devil wants to do. He wants to hinder your relationship. He wants to bind up your personality. He doesn't want you to become Christ-like. So he wants to hinder your relationship. Okay, now, I will say this pastorally, okay? That if, if you have been deeply hurt, wounded, abused by someone, let me put it this way, uh, many, many uh, young females have been abused by men. And if that abuse came in, 
many times there can be a man-hating or authority-hating spirit. If someone, many times when, when people come in, I can tell either they've got a man-hating spirit, a pastor-hating spirit, or an authority-hating spirit, because I can just tell how they respond to me. I know that there's something in there, and and God will allow me to see that so we can undo that. It's, it's not to put them down or reject them. The, the spirit of the Lord said today, God was going to bring his people with those kind of problems. The word of prophecy came and said that's what God's going to bring his people, and and, he, and that this is the guard God wants to bring them to. And here I am preaching on breaking the things that they come in. So the point, but the point I want to make is that when you can discern yourself, not lie to yourself, and you can discern, why do I, why do I respond to that person that way? Why do I respond to the same sex that way? Why do I respond to the opposite? Why do I why do I respond to someone in authority? See, here's here's what you'll see. You'll see um, people lo- leave church A B C D E F G, and then they go to the next one, and they think the the leadership is a problem in all those churches. But then you evaluate them at the marriage A B C D, and they think. The man was a problem, and I've been through job A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, and they think the supervisors was the problem in all those jobs. And many times it's that there could be a man-hating and authority-hating spirit, and, and I've cast demon spirits of pastor-hating spirits out of people. Now what I'm saying, uh, what I'm saying is, is that we can, we can have thoughts, okay, and we can and we can say I forgive. So we can come to church and say, "Well, I forgive so and so." But deep down within us, there's there's a um, mental a memory recall demon that the demon keeps reminding us. And, and we come back in agreement. We hear that voice. We come back in agreement. What I'm saying is that we can pray. I found this out the hard way. I I I was having visitations. The God God was ministering to me. And one day I went to pray, and the heavens was like brass. And then all of a sudden. That God said, would you like to sit down? I want to talk to you. I'm like shocked. So I sit down, and, and God basically, here's what God told me. God said, the heavens were brass because deep down in me was roots of bitterness. Wow. Now, I still was, I was praying. God was manifesting himself to me. I had victory. I had the spirit of prayer. And one day God said, it's way down in there. Yeah. And when I took myself through deliverance, I, I retch, I'm telling you, I retched some stuff out. Amen. I wasn't being tormented with thoughts, but there was still stuff that weighed down there within me. And it's watch yourself how you how you respond. There's a um, some young man. He could have been very young and fall in love in the early early teenage years, and some girl that he cared for went out with someone else, and a demon spirit a, a woman hating spirit could enter in. Or his mother could have been controlling. His mother could have been a Jezebel. And he he grows up with a woman-hating spirit. Now, let me just put it this way, okay? That man grows up. He's real nice at first. But when when you look back, the last five people he went with, he beat them up so bad they went had to be put in the hospital. Then one day, you meet him, and he wants you to be girlfriend number six. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's both. It's both ways. It's both ways. Okay, it's just that the man has more power, more uh, more strength, and and uh, many times the, the, there'll be a Jezebel spirit, and in the men there's a Lucifer spirit. There could be an authority hating spirit. Uh, it's real important if someone in authority talks to you. It's to your advantage Amen. to listen and obey. It's to your advantage. Yeah. Okay. It's to your advantage. It doesn't cost one an authority. Amen. It'll cost one who won't listen and won't obey and won't follow, won't follow the instruction. Okay, so that all this, uh, and I, uh, I, I may be doing this on Sunday morning. I'm not for sure, but Sunday morning, because God wants people in this church to really learn about breaking curses. And when you read these books, the Spirit of God will teach you, and uh, you're going to see this demonstrated. We're going, we're going to pray for people. And it's going to help you. Okay, Matthew 23. Now, in, in some of these I'm going to share with you, you're, you're going to see prophetic pictures, okay? Prophetic pictures that will help you understand why things are that the, the way that they are. In Matthew 23 and verse 29. 
This is Jesus speaking, red letter. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites, because you build the tombs of the prophets. Well, what do you do for a living? I build tombs for prophets. Because anybody got the courage and faith to tell me the truth, I kill them. Hang on, you think I'm kidding, okay? Okay, they build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous and say, if we, well, here's what we say, if we if we had been the day of our fathers, we, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore ye are witnesses unto yourself that you are the children of them that killed prophets. Well, well what does your daddy do for a uh, for a living. Well, my, my, my daddy's a bookkeeper. My, my daddy's a doctor. My daddy's a lawyer. My daddy's a truck driver. My daddy's a farmer. What did your daddy do? Kill prophets. Now, do you think that will affect whether that be passed down? Come on, this is a red letter. See, it, what, what the, here, you have to understand where we're coming from. Okay, For this purpose, the Son of God was benefit to destroy the works of the evil one. Okay, So anything that can be within you God wants to break it. He wants to set you free. No one talking down to anybody that if we want to be set free, we can be set free. Here's what God's saying. I said before your death and life, it's your choice. I said before you cursing and blessing, it's your choice. Choose ye this day. Now what I'm telling you, see, don't blame God when you choose cursing and curses come. Don't blame God. Don't get mad at God. Don't get mad, don't get mad at the preacher. Don't get mad at anybody. If you choose death, and you end up sick. Amen. Come on, sickness is just a tiny portion of death. Yeah. You're on your way. <laughs> Come on, seriously, saints of God. Yeah. See, this this is so simple. We try to make it uh, so. We just try to make it too complicated. Sometimes it, it's just there's there's two road. There's one one road says death. One road says lying. One road says cursing. One road says blessing. See, we choose. That, that's why this. That's why this book right here. It's just. This is so powerful. This is so simplistic. It's so simple that it's just astounding. And yet you begin. You begin to look back in your life, and in your in my life, I say like, how could I have ever been so stupid? How could I? See, that's what you need to understand. God, God will take a fool and make him wise. Not many wise, not many noble, not many mighty call. I call the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. They will not trust in the wisdom of men, but in the power and in the demonstration of the Spirit of the living God. You can do more by God's Spirit than educating your head. Now, don't make that say what I'm not saying. I'm not against education. I'm, I'm for education. We need education. I believe in college education. I'm, and uh, so don't take that. Uh, I believe in education. But in the things of God, in the things of God, you can't educate your head. There's something about the Spirit of God that gives you revelation. It's not by might, it's not by power, it's by my spirit. Okay, now, all right, now let me get, let me get, because we we, get, we got to really see this, we got to understand this. Okay, so that uh, let God help you, and then God through you can help other people. Okay, so verse 31 said, "Wherefore you're witness to yourself that you are the children of them to kill prophets." What your daddy do? With? Kill prophets. Verse 32. Fill ye up, now this is Jesus, this red letter, this is what Jesus said to them. Fill ye up then the, the measure of your fathers. You serpents. You, you generation of vipers. How can you escape the damnation of hell? Behold, the, I send unto you prophets, I send you wise men, I send you scribes, and some of them you shall kill. You crucify, and some of them you shall scourge in your synagogue, and you persecute them from city to city. That upon you may come all... See, the, uh, now see, let me, upon them going to come certain... Con there could be consequence. Now, is the devil, is God's inability to deliver them from... Is the devil overcoming them, or are they making choices? All right, now. Now, let me, let me say this. Say, well, there's a generational curse... Yes, but we still have a will. Now, here's the way. Uh, uh, this way I explain it. And uh, don't throw tomatoes at me, okay? In my heathen days, I was, un I'm not bragging, I'm just, I was an immoral man. I was in a band, ball player. I, I was an immoral man. And when I got saved, I could still go to church and my eyes go, boing, 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 boing. Uh,
I still had my sex devils. I still had the lust problem, but I was saved. Now, what I'm telling you, I had sex with no one after I became a Christian until after my wife and I were married. Now, what I'm telling you, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the mind, the lust of the faith, put them all in there. They were there. Just pick, just throw a dart against the wall when it's in there. But I did not do it because I had a will. The demons tempted me. The devil talked to me. The devils enticed me. I still had a will. I didn't do it. Come on, say of God. One day I walked out the back porch of my mom and dad's house. And I walked there on a beautiful day like that today out there. And vomit just shot, out, just shot out of my mouth. It was demons willfully leaving me because they couldn't use my body. I'm saying you don't have to sin because you've got a demon. I'm saying you don't have to sin because you've got a church. Uh, you've got a curse. Come on, say to God. You've got a will and you can. That's why he said, choose ye this day. Today. Choose ye this day. Today. You don't have to sin because you've got a demon. You don't have to sin because you've got a curse. It's been broken. He give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpion. So don't go sin say, well, I, I, it's God's fault. I got a demon lust. He didn't get it. You didn't want to get rid of it. When it was time for deliverance and we're going back here, you're going that way. Esau, Esau gave up his inheritance for a bowl of soup. Oh, my God, my <laughs> Okay, now, when you look at this, I want, I want you to be able to, you, we also need to see today's church, okay? You need to see. Okay, verse 34, wherefore I send you prophets and wise men, scribes, you shall kill, crucify the scourge them in the synagogue, and persecute them from city to city, that upon you, that all the righteous blood shed upon earth, from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, of, of whoever, who you killed between the temple and the altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you that, <laughs> that do what? You that kill? Who does God have in your life? What prophet is in your life telling you the truth? And how do you treat him? Did I just, did I? Did I make, I thought I was in a Pentecostal church. Did I accidentally stumble into Episcopalian church? Come on, St. Tim God. I thought I was in a Pentecostal church. Oh, Jerusalem, you kill prophet. You stone them that are sent to you. How do you treat people that God sent to you? You ever had someone come to you and tell you the truth about you? Yeah. Oh, we're comfortable telling other people the truth about them. But one day, God sent someone to me. And then I'm thinking about how good my hand would feel around the throat of that parakeet. No, I was thinking about an elder. <laughs> but watch this, okay? This is going to help you understand. Something goes on. How often I would have gathered your children together. See, what's God's heart? What's God thought? I'm going to send you a prophet. I'm going to send you a scribe. I'm going to send you a teacher. I'm going to send you a, uh, someone to know the word. I'm going to send you a preacher. And what would you do to him? Kill him? Stone him? See, that's why there's a warfare. Now, it's important that you and I say this over and over again. They, they're not going around killing warm-hearted pastors. They're not killing my men or teachers. Nope. It's not the evangelists they're killing. Nope. Who are they killing? What are, what's the devil trying to get out of the church? What do they not want to hear? The truth, I'm telling you, it's real hard. It's real hard to get a prophet to compromise. Prophets are just made different. Prophets, prophets do not fear man. They fear God. And they're going to tell the truth and let the chip fall where they may. Be careful. Loving, going around giving people truth when you won't receive truth for yourself. Well, I did get near as many amens right there. Come on, say God. Seriously, we got to be careful because I've seen you know I've I've seen the talk and that's that's right. I'm a go around. I'm a give. I'm a I'm a truth giver. Yeah, I have no anointing unless you receive truth. That's the one that has authority. So I how often I would have gathered together your children together 
even as a hen gathered her chicks under her wings. But you would not. Okay. You see God's heart? Now watch what verse 38. Behold, your house is left and you desolate. Have you ever been to, you ever been a dead church? You ever been to someone's house and you ever been to a church and it's your house is left in you des- desolate. Why? God sent him a prophet to give him truth. What did they do to the prophet? Then they stoned him, okay? Your house, therefore, is left to you desolate. Now, I, 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 I'm not trying to insult you. I just want to say this over and over again. Is it God's inability to deliver them? Is the devil overcoming them? Or are they just making them wise choices? See, watch yourself over and over again. Satan is, he's a legalist. He's always looking for a legal right. He's trying to get you and I to violate God's word. Hath God said? What's the correct answer? Sure is. Okay. Okay, so then the consequences is, your house that is left to you desolate, which means in the Greek, lonesome, like a desert, a wilderness, a solitary place. Now, you're going to see that in many places, and the reason is, they shut up the prophetic voice they didn't want to hear. Okay, turn to the right just a little bit, Matthew 27. Something that you hear a lot of people, I'm going to preach something here that a lot of people do not believe. Matthew 27, verse 24, Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing and that the tomb was made and he took water and washed his hand before the multitude and said, I am innocent of the blood of this just person, Jesus, see, see ye to it. Then answered all the people and said, Jesus' blood be upon us and our children. And you ponder that, you ponder that, okay? His blood, we're going to kill Jesus, and, we, and we're inviting the guilt of his blood to be upon us and our children. Uh, not, a, not a wise thing to, plan, to pray. Acts, tw- Acts 12. That's what they declared. Acts chapter 12, in verse 21. And upon a set day, Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon his throne and made an oration to them. And the people gave a great shout, saying, It's the voice of a God. Herod was making himself out to be a God. Little G, it's the voice of a God, not a man. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him. Because he did not give God the glory. And he was eaten of worms and gave up the ghost. A King James language means he passed on. Okay, now, eating the worms in prophetic language means representing ancestral demons. There's something out of sight, under, okay? And so that's what that's what eating the worms speaks of. It, ancestral demons, it's symbolized of underground deterioration, okay? There could be things eating away inside of someone, and they have no idea that what's, what's going on. Okay, so that... Uh, do you, was there a consequence right there? Okay, yeah. is that is that New Testament? Okay, yeah. so in the New Testament, are the consequences of the sin? Okay, yeah. Acts chapter nineteen. Acts chapter nineteen, verse eighteen. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. And many of them brought, which used curious arts, brought their books together and burned them before all men. Now, the word curious arts, okay, represents a whole bunch of things. Think of the people uh, with romance books, yeah. sex books, porn. Yeah. Think of the wicked CDs. Think of the wicked DVDs, drugs, alcohol, demonic games, pornography, tarot cards, Ouija boards, charms, astrology, black arts, fortune-telling articles, books on magic, casting spells, uh, demonic literature. Statues, jewelry, uh, demonic uh, jewelry, and tools. You don't want any of that in your house. Right above John Rome's head, there's a, a green book and a black book at the very top there. And both of them talk about things within your house. And then right behind John Rome's neck is two books by, I uh, can't think, remember her name right now. No, not Alice Smith. Um, Demon Dictionary. Anyway, uh there's some real good stuff there. Okay, so now, so they bring their books together and they burn them before all men and they counted the price of them but found to be 
50,000 pieces of silver, which would be $10,000 back in those days. And uh, so I, God only knows what that would be today. You know, maybe 500,000, I don't know. But, but verse 20, but mightily grew the word of the Lord and prevailed. Now see, when, here's an aspect of revival. Whenever people start getting rid of their wicked CD, the world of music, the world of DVDs, uh, the bad books, the pornography, uh, you begin to get that. Uh, the reason it's in people's houses because it's in their heart. So when that's why it's in their in, in their house because it's still in their heart. So when they get it out of their heart, it'll be out of their house. When you when you get the things of God, the things of God become bigger and better than anything that the world has to offer. If you get this, you get rid of that. But if you don't get this, see, so put you in no man land. So don't let that's that's why you heard the the word about the fire and the different thing. See that there's got to be a freedom in here to experience the power and the presence of God, so that this becomes better than that. Don't let someone tell you you can't have that and you can't have this. But you know, man, land, if, if, if you'll perish in the desert. So if you can't have that, tell God I want everything, God, that you have everything that you have for me. Okay. All right, uh, Romans chapter eight. Now remember, now no one's talking down to you. This many, you know, some of us are in here. We may have had done things before we became Christian for something that needs to be undone. We're here to help you. We're not talking down to anybody. God wants to set you free. This is a place. Uh, I wondered one of the reasons I stand so so strong for deliverance and breaking curses because when I became a Christian, I need a lot of deliverance, and it was hardly being done in the city back in those times. Uh, I, don't, I don't want to blame other people. Uh, if I'd have really sought God more, um, things would have happened. But I don't want you to spend as many years wandering in the wilderness as I did. Uh, I needed a lot of deliverance. I need things broken off in my life. That's why if it's in the Bible, we believe it. We're going to do it. Let the chips fall over the main. That's that's just uh, the way. It, okay, Romans chapter 8 and verse 5. For they that are in the flesh... Do mind the things of the flesh, but they the rest of the spirit, the things of the spirit. That's basically saying the same thing. I said before your death and life, cursing and blessing. Choose choose uh, life that you and your seed may live and may multiply. Okay, so that says either the flesh or the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So people then that are carnally minded, the word carnal means they put the flesh before the spirit. Put the outward person before the inward person. Put people's body before any character. Put their physical part before the spiritual part. Put the natural before the supernatural. We'll put immorality before morality. Put sex before who they are as a person. That's what the word carnal means, okay? To be to be carnally minded is... Dead. So if they come to church, they can't figure why they feel so dead. Yeah. See, because to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Yeah. When... When being alive in the Spirit and peace with God becomes better than that out there, freedom. Amen. See, freedom. And then what that releases you from the path and you begin going for it because you, you begin to realize how good God is. And if God is this good, as little as I know about Him, what if I keep growing? Okay, verse 7, because the carnal mind, which means the flesh or, uh, or body as opposed to the spirit man, it speaks of animal appetites, the natural, not the spirit. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, which means hostile, opposed, means, it literally means this in the Greek, hates God. Hates God. And we saw that we, we shared in Romans, Romans chapter 1 last week, that uh, haters of God, haters of authority. Okay, so there's enmity against God, and it's not subject to the law of God. Therefore, them that are in the flesh cannot please God. Now, can you see right there, the consequence of being carnally minded. Amen. Now here, here's what I'm saying. No matter how carnally minded someone is when they first come here, they can be set free. Thank you, Jesus. They can come. They can come out of. No matter how carnal. That's the message that we're preaching. Okay. We're not saying you're horrible, wicked because uh, you've had a carnal thought. We've all had some. If, if we were to be honest, we've all had a few. Come on, said to go. What I'm telling you, if you've got a carnal mind, you don't have to stay carnally minded. You can be set free from that. There's, that's a deep. We can cast carnally minded out. We can cast uh, natural mind out. The natural mind cannot comprehend things of the spirit. Anything that's blocking you in the realm of your mind, 
you can be set free. God will renew your mind. He said in Ephesians 4.23, be renewed, which means renovated in the spirit of your mind. He said in, in, uh, in 2 Corinthians 10, 3, 4, for the weapons of our warfare, the not come, but the mighty through God, through the pulling down of stronghold, casting down imagination, every high thing, they would exalt itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Jesus Christ. Every thought that comes to you, you have authority. You can take that thought captive. You got authority over, okay? That's what we're talking about. It's not where you are now. You're not going to be where you are spiritually one week from now, one month from now, one year from now. You will not be the same person because you're going, truth will come forth and you will come into alignment with truth and the truth will make you free. If then how you come in that door, you're not going to leave out that door for uh, six months or a year or even one month the same condition. Amen? Come on, give God a praise just here a little bit here. Come on, give God a praise. Okay, now. Romans chapter 13. And we're talking about identifying and breaking curses. Different things come upon you. And remember, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to identify so you can see there's certain things so that you learn not to, you know, not to violate God's word, okay? Romans chapter 13. Let every soul be subject to the higher powers. That means authority, delegated influence. Let every soul be subject to the higher power, for there is no power but of God. Amen. And the powers are the authority that are, are ordained of God. Amen. You may have a supervisor that gets on your nerves. <laughs> it says, that, but there's no authority but that of God, that's ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resists the, the person in authority is resisting the ordinance of God. And look right here just a minute. See, here, here's, what, here's what you learn. If someone won't obey God, if someone won't obey this authority, they're not going to obey this authority. Because here's the real problem. You get this right, it's real easy to submit here. Okay? Show me someone that won't submit. See, to, to, uh, the people that God had put in the place of authority, I'll show you a person that got the vertical problem. Here's where the real problem is, okay? That, that's, what, that's been man's problem, lawlessness. There's a spirit of lawlessness. It's a great big demon. Rebellion is at the sin of witchcraft. There was a, when we first started, when, uh, long, we weren't even in this building. There was a drummer, and we, we used to have two bands, two full bands in our, in our church. And there was a drummer. We have real low ceiling, and this drummer would hit the drum so loud, no one could hear their instrument, so everybody else was turning up their instrument. Well, then, when other people turned their instrument, he'd play the drums louder. And so, it all was with just mass noise and confusion. Everybody had been blasted out, and nobody could hear anything. It, the, the, this person goes higher, this person goes higher, this person goes higher, this person goes higher. It was mass confusion. And so I said, you know, you know, brother. <laughs> Would you just soften drums just a little bit? <laughs> Years later, the guy the guy rebels. The guy leaves the church, packs up his drum, takes his toys, and go home. Uh, he he goes home, closes all the doors, all the windows, pulls the shades, quits his job, sits there, goes into deep depression. I saw him years years later, years years later, and someone said something. To him, and he, ah, we talk about he something mentioned something about me, and he goes, ah, 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 hatred. Uh, and all was like, would you mind just playing the drums that just a little bit softer? So if leadership, see, comes to you and says something, yes. come on, saints of God, there's government authority, there's church authority, there's family authority. See, if you can't submit to authority here, there's a Thing. But see, here's the lie. I, I, the lie is, I know the, more than the person in authority. Uh, but God said, see, who, who's wiser, the teacher or the student? But see, it's very common for the student to think that they're smarter than that. But see, here, here's, here's something that will happen. You actually be upon your job. And they'll tell you to do something. 
and you know it will not work. Because yeah. you, do, you do that little job, you know it's not going to work, and you tell them. And they tell you, go ahead, no, I want you to do it. I want you to do this ABC, but you know ABC is not going to work because you already did it. It doesn't work upon your job. And so he wants you to do an ABC, and you, you suggest X, Y, Z. Okay? Then you go ahead and do what he says to do, and when it doesn't work, see, it's on him. It's not on you. See, you're free. You're free. You're free. Okay? And then, see, what happens, you don't demand. You don't demand respect. You earn. Respect. Okay, by be, uh, you you submit to God. You suggest it. And say, I don't think ABC going to work. I think we all do X Y Z. Ah, and so so the supervisor may be a little harsh and tell you, No, we're going. Here's what we're going to do. And you go ahead and do it that way. It doesn't work. It's on him. See what happens if that happens. If that happens, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Pretty soon they're going to be asking your opinion. Come on, Saint to God. See, every time you can, you can make your suggestion. You can make your suggestion if you know it's not going to work. But see, see, sometimes, sometimes it's a test of our. It's just a little test for us. Okay, we'll, 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 but I know that's not going to work. But you're, you know, you're the supervisor, and God tells me to submit, and I'm, go, I'm going to submit to authority. Okay, so <coughs> verse two. Whosoever resists the the person in authority, resists the ordinance. The word resist means opposes, stands against, and withstands the ordinance of God. And they that resist the authority shall receive unto themselves what? Damnation. I use the King James Bible, which means judgment, which means condemnation. It means to go to law for a crime. Okay, now, if... If, if if a Christian doesn't doesn't obey authority, is it on the authority or is it on the Christian? Okay. See, because they shall receive it to themselves. For rulers are not a terror to the good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power of the person that's in authority? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is a minister of God. He is a minister of God to thee for good. I want to say something, especially single females, you really want to hear. I mean, you want to lean forward. Single females, you want to be real careful who you marry. Amen. Hallelujah. Because God has made him to be the head of the family. Sound doctrine? And you don't want to marry someone that won't obey God. Sound doctrine? That's real sound doctrine. See, that person will tell you, wives of pit, I'm the head of this her household. Amen. But won't obey God himself. Amen. Okay, That's why it's very important that every one of us know God for ourselves. Yeah. So that if you're here in any kind of stronghold that's within us, God wants to set you free. That's the purpose of it. Okay, In a little bit, this church service will get a little ugly. <laughs> We're going to have an operation. Okay, there's going to be the operating room. The Holy Ghost will be doing operation. And if you want to get rid of some stuff, you can get rid of some stuff. What God will set before you is freedom or bondage. Choose the you this day. <laughs> what God will set before you is come out or stay in. <laughs> Now, people with the biggest demons are convinced. I don't need deliverance. That's, that's the real big demon. That's the biggest demons. Yes, that's the demon says I don't need deliverance. There must be some drug addict come in here, somebody, some yeah. filthy sinner stumbled in here. That's who. That's who deliverance is for. That person got the biggest, bigger demon because they'll kill the prophet. They'll kill the person in authority. They hear voices. Wow. Okay, next scripture, uh, first, first Corinthians chapter six. First Corinthians chapter six at verse fifteen. Know 
ye not that your body of the your bodies of the members of Christ shall I then remember this written to the Corinthian church shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of a harlot? No, no. God forbid. What? Know ye not that he that is joined or becomes one with the harlot is one body. So if, if someone uh, was a Christian and snuck off with a prostitute, then that person becomes one with the harlot. What? Know ye not that he that is joined with, uh, to a harlot is one body, for two, saith he, shall become one flesh. Now what we're talking about, what we're talking about is legal rights. I'm going to talk a little plain here. Um, every person you have sex with, their demons can come into you because you become one body. Their curses can come into you. And imagine, so you become you become one flesh, you become one. That's what I said right there. The two become one. Now, uh, different ministers will share this different ways when they talk about... Um, Soul fragmentation, okay? And uh, so I'll just, I don't try to tell people you're going to believe like I believe. That in, in, um, in fragmented souls, many times it's like, let's just say someone has been sexually abused when they're a child, then uh, there'll be some separation of their soul and there'll be parts and the, 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 what we call altars. And that altar will go to a certain place, and those altars can manifest, and some of those altars become uh, demonized. Uh, other other ministers will say fragmented souls. Every time you have sex with someone, you're giving them a part of you. Yes. And then, then you can become a Christian, but you gave away part of yourself yes. to every person you had sex with. Yes. And so that's what we call ungodly soul ties. Yes. So then you've got to break the soul tie. Yes. Okay, so every person then that you had sex with, you gave away part of yourself, and that's what we call soul ties. And we got the book up there, soul ties, on the top shelf, the black one, right above Brenda uh, and Rick's head back there. Okay, so that's what this is saying. So there's a fragmented soul. So, so many times that you're having thoughts, thoughts and desires toward that person can come to you, and the reason is because there's a soul tie, and that needs to be confessed, and needs to be repented, that curse needs to be broken, that demon needs to be cast out, so you could be free. Okay. Okay, so, what know you not that he that is joined to a harlot is one body, for two saith he shall become one flesh. But he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. See, if you go around and give your body to different people, then what's in them can come into you. Okay, and, and you give away a part of yourself. But he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. Now, when I woke up this morning, I heard two words. I was hearing two words. And I did not have this particular text in here. When I got up this morning, I, I, the Spirit of God kept saying this one scripture to me. in it's verse 18. Flee fornication. Flee fornication. For every sin that a man does is without the body. But he that commits fornication sins against his own body. Okay, so... And in other words, the demons can come into your body. You'll sin against you. You'll be defiling and contaminating your land, your mind, your will, your emotion, your body, your sex realm, and passing on those kind of curses even to your children. Okay? That's what that's saying. So I don't know who that's for, but that's for someone. Uh, but flea fornication, that the Bible said, every sin that man does is without the body, but he that commit. Now, the word fornication means all sex outside of marriage. All sex outside of marriage. Then sins against his own body. That's why many people come to church and they're dead because they've, they've sinned against their own body. Yeah. And and what I'm saying is God wants to set you free. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying that there's answers for that. Okay? You, you can be free. You can Believe me, you can be free. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna skip that. Let me I'm gonna skip that one. I'm gonna skip first Corinthians eleven. Go to second Corinthians six, please. Second Corinthians six, which is uh, verse seven seventeen. Wherefore come up from among them, be a separate people 
said the Lord, touch not, do not touch the unclean thing. Okay, the unclean thing means something impure, lewd, foul, or demonic. Okay, pornography is demonic. Okay, so you don't want to be acting out with pornography, touching out the unclean thing. Or, uh, okay, so, so if God said do not touch the unclean thing, you certainly don't want to have sex with the unclean thing. Amen? Okay, now, keep your finger there. Well, well you don't, don't turn to this because I'm just going to. Let me just quote. This is Numbers 16, verse 26. And he spoke unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray thee, from the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing of theirs. Do not, okay, depart from the tents or the houses of these wicked men, touch nothing of theirs, lest you be consumed in all of their sins. Okay, whatever you sin with, see, you give yourself to that, that's what you get overcome with. Okay, so there's, you you just, uh, touch not the unclean thing. Okay, let me just say this. See, if someone wanted to know something about us, all they need to do is a record who we've been texting back and forth, who we've been tweeting with, who we've been calling. Just check someone's phone. Amen. Where, where have we been? Yep. Who have we been with? Yes. You'll know so much about a person. Amen. You know, who, who are you spending time with on Facebook? Yeah. See, we could, we could come to church here with a smile upon our face and go home and spend more time with the heathen so touch not the wicked thing, touch not the unclean thing, and now, now, touch not the unclean thing, comma, and I will receive you, and will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons, and you shall be my daughters, say the Lord. How many want that? Amen. Okay, now, Ephesians chapter 6. Now, just in the first few verses of here, there's you know there's about six months of preaching. And I, I'm not exaggerating. I mean, if I went into detail upon this, Ephesians chapter six and verse one, children obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with a promise. What's the promise? That it may be well with you, that you may live long. So I'm going to say this again. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Okay, let me, let me just... Uh, I, 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 um, I won't go there. Okay, honor your father and mother with the first command, with a promise that it may be well with you. Does God want it to be well with you? Yes. Is he telling children how to win? Yes. Okay. That it may be well with you, that you may live long upon the earth. And you fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, bring them up on the nurture and the, and, and the admonition of the Lord. When, when, we, when we have a child dedication, we're not saying, God, this is your responsibility to raise a child. What we're saying as a parent... I'm going to accept the responsibility of raising a child in the house of God. So we say, we're making, we're making uh, the vow to God. We're saying, God, I will raise the child in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. See, when we do what we need to do, God will move right in there. God will move it. But if we don't even bring him the child to church, and if, if the world's in our house, and they're drinking, and they're drugging, and fornicating, and pornography, and partying, and all kinds of stuff, going to have that we are not raising the child in the nurture and, the, and in the admonition of the Lord. Okay, so it's very important that you honor your mom and dad. Now, let me, let me say that. There's people that have very sinful mommies and daddies. One of them or, or both of them. Uh, that doesn't mean that you, that you, th there's, a, there's a position there. You may not respect the person. See, you, you may, you may, you may disrespect the person, but there's an honor of the position. And you're not going to disrespect them. You're not going to mean nothing. You're not going to curse them. You can tell them. You can communicate to them. But you're always a respect. You don't be cursing that mommy and daddy, kick him in the shin and, and doing all, all kinds of things and uh, physically attacking them. So there's a certain thing that you want to you respect that because it doesn't cost them. It'll cost you. 
Okay. Um, I'm going to skip some stuff here, and then I'm going to... Let's go to Revelation chapter 22. All right, let me get there myself. Revelation chapter 22. Now we're talking about identifying breaking curses. And uh, I'm going to stop here in just a little bit. We're going to change all the service. Revelation chapter 22 and verse 14 says, Blessed are they that do his commandments. This is what Jesus said. If you love me, keep. If you love me, keep my commandments. See here. Uh, what? Make a way for. Clutching under pressure several times here. <laughs> Blessed are they that do his commandments. Okay, what we don't want to do is tell God that we love him while we're disobeying his yeah. principles. You have to understand nine of the ten commandments, that was last Sunday's message. The nine of the ten commandments are repeated in the New Testament. Jesus said, Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not lie, thou shalt not steal. They're repeated, okay? Okay, when people tell you there's the, you know, the, the New Testament, there's no consequence of sin, they're not telling you the truth. For the wages of sin is what? Okay, verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, and they that have the right to the tree of life may enter in through the gates of the city. For without of the gates of the city, are dogs, which are the unclean, the sorcerers, mean the alcohol and the drug people, and the whoremongers, which are the sexual sin, and the murders, and the idolaters. And the idolaters are image and, and uh, image worshippers. Sorcerers, I mean, the spell, a portion, a druggist, a pharmacist, a, poison, a, a poisoner, or magician, Idolatry in them that loveth and maketh a lie. The Bible says all liars shall have the place where? Okay, we're going to come in for landing. Okay, perfect Tim, what you tune in. Verse 18. For I testify unto every man. Now I want you to see if, if you can find any consequences of sin here. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things... God shall add unto him all the plagues that are written in this book. The word plagues mean calamities, all the heavy affliction, the strokes, the wounds, the stripes that are written in this book. And if any man take away from the words of this book, of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life, now the holy city, and from the things that are written within this book. Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer.